All right. Praise God. Well, I'm going to continue today talking about giving. And I'm going to talk about the giving that brings manifestations. And um, one of the things I, I discovered, and even going through my notes, because we're coming up on first fruit, what we call first fruit, uh, first fruit offering, is, um, you know, I try not to, well, I don't. I, I study, I study, and I don't, just don't rehash stuff, even though I say some of the same things. It's in a different place. And um, so today is, God kind of took me out of that to, uh, to deal with some things that we even talked about, but he says, stay with it. Now, I want to begin this way. The Bible says that, Jesus says, seek ye first what? The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. Um, Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of God. We talk a lot about church. The kingdom of God is a, is a real system. It's a government. It's, a, it's, it's God's plan. God brought from, from heaven to earth, the kingdom of God. Um, Jesus said that, and he talked about it. He, he, said, he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man plants. Remember? He said, this is how the kingdom works. Uh, and Colossians 1 tells us that we've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So we're in a kingdom, that we're citizens of his kingdom. I said we're citizens of his kingdom. Um, Jesus told his disciples, he said, go preach the kingdom of God. The, he told them, go preach the gospel of the kingdom. One time he sent them, and they, they cast out devils, they healed. He said, now, now when, you, when this happened, tell them, tell them that the kingdom of God just got near you. The kingdom. Everybody say the kingdom. Yeah. And then Paul said one time, he said, the kingdom of God, it, well, one time he said, the kingdom of God is not, not meat and drink. Right. Here, there, no, he said, he said, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And then Paul said, finally, I'll just stop here. He said, the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. In other words, the kingdom of God, though it's something you can't see, it manifests and demonstrates itself in power where you can see it. Amen. The kingdom of God. And so the kingdom of God is a government. So, you know, we just sang the song, King Jesus. So every king, every kingdom has a king. And every king rules. He's not voted in. He's not voted out. He doesn't get a term. He is. He establishes the kingdom, and every kingdom has a protocol. Every kingdom has a code of ethics. Every kingdom has a culture. So if the king is nasty, well, if the king is bad and, and ruthless, like some of, the, some of the kings in other parts of the country, I mean, not the country, but the world, if the king is, is ruthless, then the kingdom, the, the citizens in the kingdom, they will be oppressed, depressed, and messed up. So the culture of the kingdom is set by the king. Oh, good class, good class, good class. And so we got a king who loves us with the unconditional love that will never leave us, never forsake us. Our king is all about good. Our king is all about love you. Our king is all about providing for you. Our king is all about taking responsibility. Well, this is good. I had not planned on saying all this. The, our king is all about never allowing you to be without victory at your fingertips. Our king is a healer. Our king is a provider. Our king is a defender. Our king, ah! Oh. Our king is a comforter. So, okay, so, 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 so. But in the kingdom, there's protocol, there's policies, there's a way of doing things. I've been translated, we've all been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. I can't take the kingdom of darkness protocol, ethics, and policies and bring them over here to this kingdom and expect them to work. The king has final thought. Nobody votes. So when he tells me how to live, uh, it's no debate. The king says, do this. Right? He's the king. 
We sang the song, and the scripture said, we're not our own. I belong to the king. The king is responsible for me. If I do what the king says, it's all good. So I need to do everything I can to find out everything the king is saying and do it. Right? Because I want it well with me. So I'm saying all that because we're in this area of giving. And see, giving is a kingdom principle. Dude, didn't, a man didn't make this up. You know, and we're talking about giving, but, 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 but the way it works, praise is a kingdom principle. Amen. Prayer is a kingdom principle and activity. This is how you get the king to be actively involved in your natural. If I say kingdom. And so we have to understand as citizens of the kingdom, I just need to, if I just flow, flow with the king, it's all good. So with that jumping off spot, we're going to pick up. Well, actually, we're not going to pick up because I, I don't have time to review today. I want to, uh, I want to talk about this giving that, that, that um, produces manifestations because I, I want you to experience the joy Amen. of giving. Because some people have been giving for years with no result and consequently they haven't been doing it the kingdom way and consequently it's not working or stuff dried up and they're like man forget all that and so those will be the people that are like is he still talking about giving on Sundays okay I'm gonna wait till he's done I already know what he's gonna say I've been there I already know you all see this text I just got a little while ago and they've been here the whole time the church been here it's amazing that's why you gotta keep on teaching it and keep on teaching it and keep on teaching it so if you'll embrace what we're going to talk about today, I'll tell you, your, your giving and your receiving will go to a whole new level. So I want to begin. We talked about this, but 1 Corinthians 13. Make sure your neighbor doesn't go to sleep today. And I want to say some things. Some of it may be a little shocking, but it's good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay, you there? Where? Okay, I just want to see if you're paying attention. Now, one of the, we said several things, and one of the points we made at one, at one time, was we said that our motives are more important than our offering. You remember that? Yeah. And so that's going to drive us today, and then I'm going to draw a contrast between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Now, the motive behind my gift, the motive behind my gift can completely cancel out my harvest. My, I don't care how much I give, how strong I give it. If my motive is off, it can completely cancel everything that God promised me. Everything. Everything. And so we have to, we have to check, always be checking the motive because God wants us to benefit from giving. That giving is a kingdom principle. <laughs> We're going to get into this at some point. But he said, he said, I know it's a principle. Why? Because he said, I give seed to the sower and what a bread for food. So he gives me seed to give, to sow. He, he understands this is how you keep the system going. This is how you grow the system, and he leaves it up to me. So if, if giving wasn't a kingdom principle, he wouldn't give me seed. Yeah, that's right. So my motive can cancel out. And we, again, I keep wanting to interject in this, in, interject, inject, say it. I want to keep saying this because... We're, even though we're talking about offering, this, this relates to all ki every kind of giving. Every kind of giving. What I give to my family, what I give to my church, what I give to my job, what I give to, it affects everything, what I give to my spouse. Because if my motive is twisted, my benefit and, re and harvest will be twisted. Yeah. Okay, let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, verse no, 1. He says, 1 Corinthians 13, 1. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I, oh, okay. Ooh, Lord, giving me stuff on my feet here. 
uh, though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me. It profits me. It profits me. It profits me. It benefits me. It's, it, it brings an advantage to me. It takes me to a bigger and higher place. Nothing. And so he says, you can do all of that. You can sell everything you want. God, you can, you can, you can lay your life down for somebody. But if your motivation for doing that is not, it's not consistent with being a benefit to others, he said, that's not going to profit you. So he wants it to profit me. Right? So... It, <laughs> My motive can cancel my profit. If I just want to be seen, if it's like, what's in it for me? That's the wrong, that's the wrong, that's the wrong motive. What's in it for me? What do I get out of this? And I, I, I made it, I, I was telling this morning, you know, yesterday my wife asked me that she wasn't feeling well, she was overcoming. And I said, that's all that. Anyway, um, she's overcoming. And she said, I said, what can I do for you? She said, oh, I would love a 16-ounce mocha with coconut from Kaladi Brothers. <laughs> now I got to go, now I got to go way down the street. <laughs> I could have went to the little hut down on the corner. <laughs> but when she said Kaladi Brothers, now I got to put, I got to put some clothes on and, 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 and wash up. <laughs> but anyway, so she said, I said, okay, no problem. Amen. No problem. Amen. And so, so I got in my car, I drove down there, and, and well, I ain't going to say the other part I said this morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I went and got it, and, 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 you know, she was still in her, you know, her, what she wear around the house. So, oh, thank God, I hope y'all don't ever see what she wears around the house. <laughs> but uh, some of y'all got some of that too, though, I know. But, um. Uh, and so when, she, when I got it, when I brought it to her, she, she, she took a sip, took a little thing out, took a sip. Said, oh. Now, you said, what's the big deal? I felt like I, I mattered at that moment. I felt like I helped relieve something in her. That my gift, my giving and doing that, and I paid for it. that my giving brought something to her. Now, and her reaction blessed me. See, our giving, when I give to you, I ought to, I ought to feel something. I'm not, whether you jump up and down, but I feel like, wow, I just served. I added something to the universe. All giving is supposed to be like that. See, that ought to be just a natural response. You know, yeah, they should say thank you. They should all of that. But that ought to be a natural thing that, wow, I just, yeah. It yeah, feels, yeah. It, see, it feels good. Jesus said it's more blessed to yeah. than to yeah. see something happens in you when you give. Amen. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? You experience that. Yeah. You just like, yeah. And then you get a, sometimes you're like, wow, they don't even deserve it, but I just want to give. Yeah. It's some, and then it becomes addictive. It's like, oh, I gotta, I gotta give something. I would tell them, I keep, well, what's, what's, I think she's here. I, I keep, I keep money in my left pocket just for giving, just for giving. Amen. And and I already gave some today because the the lady, the cleaning lady, I said you're it. And she, she was cleaning the bathroom. I had to use the bathroom. And I said you're it. She said, oh, Pat. I said, okay. Well, her little grandson said, well, go on, I'll, get, I'll pick it up. <laughs> and so, and so, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's, because I got a guy tell me once, he said, you're not a giver if you don't keep cash on you. I'm like, really? She said, yeah, you never know who God going to have you bless. So always keep cash. If it's $5 or $10, but don't say you're a giver and you don't plan to give. Oh, y'all like that? Huh? The first crowd didn't like that. I got my, I almost had a giver up in the house. He said, yeah, he said, you're not a giver. You say you're a giver. I said, no, I'm a giver. He said, no, you got cash? He said, because you ain't trying to write no check out to somebody you don't know. I said, no, that's true. So, so, so everybody 
it's, it's a life thing. Say it's a life thing. It's a life thing. Okay, but we're talking about motive. So we established, the, uh, we established that stewardship was important, but the, the reason I give is more important than anything. And so I said this, I thought it was so good. I think it was so good. I said it, but it's just good. Well, well, listen, if just giving was all there was to experience in this, we all have way more than enough. If it was just about giving, because motive can cancel it out. Some of us have been giving for 20, 30 years. If it was just about what? Giving and not motive, it wouldn't be a problem. So it's got to be something. And see, your pastor, Pastor Ken Friendly, Kenneth L. Friendly, I love you too much, and I love God way more, but I love him too much to not make sure that this is covered because it ain't about, yeah, the church will be blessed and whoever you give to will be blessed, but it's supposed to profit you. I said it's supposed to profit you because a lot of people quit on God and they quit because, remember, we, well, if you've been with us, we were talking about, it's more than just money, but people quit the giving thing because, like, what? It ain't working. Then they quit on God and, and even quit on, you can't even give long term to your family if your motive is not right. Okay. Now, I want you to go to Genesis 14 because I, uh, I want to draw a contrast between what he said in the Old Testament. And I, want, I think I'll show you too why, and that's what this person was telling me here, Lord Jesus. No wonder the thing ain't working. And I'm like, okay, well, at least I got the one person. I mean, didn't get to him, but the one person got it. So, giving is a, ma a heart of the matter. It's a heart matter. Now, we're going to talk about the tenth for a minute. How many know God doesn't need our money? No, he doesn't. The motive, again, he, he needs what it represents. The Bible said wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And so, and so if my treasure goes to God, not only does my treasure go, my trust is demonstrated now. And my confidence in God is demonstrated now. So in the old covenant, tithing, 10%, 10%, the tithe, the tithing 10th, was, 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 so powerful that God had to make it into a law. But prior to the law, Abraham did it. Now let's look at it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it, but I want you to see it because um, a lot of kingdom citizens are still trying to operate under that old non-kingdom citizen system and it doesn't work. Okay, Genesis 14. You there? Yep. Now, this is the first time tithing is mentioned. I don't know where Abraham got it from, but he started, he started doing it. Now, he just had a major victory over four kings, major victory. In verse 18, then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High. And he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram of the Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemy into your hands. And he gave him a a tithe of all. Now, this is awesome because Abraham just had this major victory. And when you got the victory, you got all the spoil. You got all the spoil. You got all the people. You got everything. And so, but here's what I want you to see. There was no commandment for Abraham to do this. There was no commandment for Abraham to tell. There was nothing written. There was no law. That if you don't do this, you're going to be cursed with a curse. All that hadn't come yet. Abraham did it. I don't know where he got it from, but he chose to do it out of appreciation for what God had done. How do you know that? Look at verse 21. Now the king of Salem, Sodom, asked, said to Abraham, give me the person and take the goods for yourself. But Abraham said to the king, I have raised my hand to the Lord God most high, the possessor of heaven and earth. What he's saying was, uh, king, let me tell you something. You may not understand this, but I'm going to tell you about it anyway. I made a covenant with God. God and I decided you are my source, you are my sustainer, you're my provider, you're my defender. God, I worship you, I trust you with my life. The reason where I think he got that from, if you go back, when God told him, leave your mother, your father, remember he, they, God told him to leave, leave your, 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 uh, the Ur of Chaldees, 
and Abraham was leaving his system. It's like being, you, you're like being in a job. You had a job, you got your support system, you've been there 20 years, and then all of a sudden you uproot. God said, I want you to get up and go. Leave all of that. Right. I can't liquidate, leave all of that. And then he got up, remember, didn't he get up? And he went where? He went to a place. He didn't even know where he was going. I think that's referring back here. He said, no, you know what? When I left home, I left my mama. I left the establishment. I, left, I was supposed to take over the family business. I was already in there. I had it all. I left all of that. And when I left, I told her, I said, God, you see what I'm leaving. But I'm going because you told me to go. He said, I had lifted my hand. I mean, God, I'm, like, I gotta come. I'm trusting you with my life. I'm trusting you with my family. I'm trusting you to help them understand because I don't even understand. And they're calling me crazy. But I'm trusting you as we go. And I need you to speak to me. And so now here is years later, he had this major victory. And cause God was blessing him all along the way. How many know obedience caused you to step into the blessing in a major way? Okay, that's another subject. And so, so Abraham telling the king, I have raised my hand to the Lord, most high. Look at verse 23. So he said, that I will take nothing from a thread to a sandal strap, and that I will not take anything that is yours, lest you say, trying to take credit for what God did, lest you say, I have made Abraham rich. So Abraham gave him a tithe long before Malachi. Malachi. So, this was before the Mosaic law, which brought the, the uh, tithe. Now, this is the part I want to get to, because this is the part that had me bound for years, and, and, and even though I got free of it, some of it was still hanging on, but once I got out from under that, I'm like, whoa, okay, okay. Now, what I'm about to say, it's going to sound a little like, Pastor, what you're saying. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you what I'm saying. Okay? Y'all ready? You got your wig on tight? Your wig on tight? There's always one in the crowd right there. And she knew I was playing, but no. she got to be all serious. Okay. Now we're going to go to the law. Tithing was in the law, and it took tithing to a whole nother level. A whole nother level. And this is where the sister, she said, man, thank you for setting me free just a little while ago. Go to Malachi, uh, Malachi 3. You there? You probably can quote it. I'm not going to stay that long. I'm going to just say it. I'm going to hit it and quit it, and then we're going to... Verse 8. Will a man rob God? How many God robbers in here today? Okay. Yeah, you had robbed me. But you say, what? And what have we robbed you? And what? You robber? Well, look at this. You are cursed with a what? Curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Okay, now. Now. He, 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 uh, under, this, under this scenario. And I hate to preach this. But under this scenario. That tie was mandatory. If you didn't do this, you got a curse on you, your children, your dog, your frog, and everybody else. <laughs> it's a debt. It's an obligation. It's a requirement. You, you see it? Yeah. It's mentor. You a God robber. And I had a pastor used to tell me, are you robbing God? No. No. And so what happened was they, the, the, the motive, remember we're talking about motive. So if I'm giving like that, what's my motive? Fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. And so, so if I'm giving out of fear, I better do this because I ain't trying to, I'm going to, look, I'm flying, I'm, I got a trip next week. I got to fly to Seattle. I used to do this. I'm like, baby, we, we gave our tithe and everything, right, right? Because we can get on an airplane. Or uh, we're going to do that. We can go to Six Flags. You know, they got them big roller coasters. <laughs> I'm serious. We used to live in Texas. I'm serious. I'm like, okay, now, now, 
Galatians 3, 13. Go ahead. Now stay with me because I'm getting ready to bring it home. Galatians 3, 13. Just look up. Uh, because, because Jesus, thank God for Jesus. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He changed all of that. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the what? Curse. What curse is he talking about? That one he was talking about in Malachi. Jesus changed all of that. I remember when I first met Jesus changed the, he, Jesus redeemed me from that curse. That curse that curse doesn't come on me. Aren't you glad of that? Yes. So if you have a tie, don't you ain't got no curse on you? You got something else, but you don't have a curse. What are we talking about? We talking about motive. I think one of the reasons that people don't receive the benefit of the giving aspect, the reason why folks don't get excited about giving is because they still have this mindset. They still have this mindset that I got to do this and, 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 and still do it, but I got to do this. I don't want to, I don't want to rob God. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble with God, Pastor. So I ain't been to church in two months, but they send their time. No, that's the truth. We have people, they've been here for like forever, but they send their money. Wow. Kind of like protection money. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. That's, yeah, yeah. It's the same mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want God cursing me, ain't living nothing, ain't, ain't reading the Bible, ain't doing nothing, but they send their time. I had drug dealers, a drug dealer. I, uh -huh. <laughs> well, yeah, and he, he would send his tithes every week, and we took them too. No, no, because <laughs> money is amoral. It was bad in his hands. It was good in our hands. He, I, you know, I ain't giving no special prayer nothing. But he, he was always taught as a child, you get tired. And he thought that that would help his business. It didn't. He, he's, he's, he's in the... Uh, place of higher learning right now. <laughs> okay. So he redeemed us from the curse. Now, I want you to, okay, now I want to show you the contrast. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. I want to show you the contrast between being in the kingdom and being outside of the kingdom. In the kingdom, it ain't like this. Glory to God. Motive. Now go to 2 Corinthians. Oh, man. Thank you, Lord. And see, that's why you got to take the time to go back over stuff. And, and God said to me, take your time and teach this because I want the people to benefit. You know, you have way more than enough when you, when you understand it and it's working. You'll be like, shoot. Okay. So, anybody got a question? I know what you're thinking over here. <laughs> so what you saying, Pastor? You saying I ain't got the I ain't got the I ain't got the I ain't got the, I ain't got the top of my ten percent? Okay, let's just move on. <laughs> How many want to know that? You already got it figured out. I'm like, I ain't answering nothing. <laughs> okay, listen to me. For many people, giving has become mechanical. It's not worship. That's what God thinks about, because he told me, bring back the worship component in the giving. But for some, you know, and now we do, I do, uh, Deb and I, we, we, when we give, a lot of stuff we do automatic. Now you can just fill out a card and say, okay, take this out every, every 15th. And so we, we do a lot of it like that because I, I like saving time. But one thing you miss in that is, because I used to write them all out and I would put them all up there and I would, I would just worship God with it. But one thing about the automatic, you don't, the worship component is kind of just like, Amen. and it becomes mechanical. God doesn't want a mechanical offering. 
Even we do the tech to give. But at least with that, we can worship God with our giving. But see, God doesn't want mechanical. He wants to worship Amen. with the offering. And so um, in the old covenant, it was, it was out of duty. It was out of obligation. It was mechanical. We've got to do this. God's like, uh uh So in this new covenant, look at here. Um, in your, your 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Yeah. <sighs> So, Pastor, you saying you you saying I don't have to tithe? You don't have to do anything. Okay. I don't even I don't even use it like personally the word tithe. I do I use giving, but you don't have to tithe, but you got to give. Amen. That's good. And I'm sure you stay with me. I know someone like oh God, is he is he is he is he? See, if you want, there's nothing meant. God won't make you. If he's going to make you do anything, he'll make you get saved. But he doesn't make you do anything. But if you want the unexplainable in your life, you got to give God something. You got to give God a worship. How do you explain? Oh, uh, okay, I won't point him out. But I, Brother Jim called me. She said, Pastor, you ain't going to believe what just happened this week or today. And I said, what happened? He said, we had a, somebody sent a package to the church. I was like, oh, okay. We don't need to get the, the EOD people over there, don't we? He said, no, no, it's good, it's good, it's good. And so um, one, of our, one of our wonderful members who serve in the prison ministry, uh, they, he, they called and said, this is a package here for you. They sent it to the church. And he said, oh, okay. And... Uh, he opened it up, and it had in it, <laughs> I, can, I can show you all the picture. No, it had in it a, uh, uh, an apparatus, a Rolex watch. Hallelujah. And being an inquisitive person I am, I'm like, uh, what kind of was it? Because I got, I got one, but it's a 1995. And they're like automobiles. They got VIN numbers and all that. And so he said, it's a 2012. And then he gave me the name and he actually sent me a picture. Worth $75,000. Yeah, you, you heard me. <laughs> you better write, write that down. Yeah. And he just minded his business, serving the Lord, preaching the word. He had no idea. I'm talking about unexplainable stuff. He, he said, I don't need to know who it was. They just said, I just want to thank you for ministering to me. And, the, and so I asked him a thousand dollar question. I'm not going to tell y'all what I asked him, but send me five thousand dollars. <laughs> they in here now. So okay, I ain't gonna show all that business. <laughs> I should have shown in the first service. Sometime I watch when I know put me in here, I say I'll say a lot more when I know they ain't in the service. But yeah, he looked it up. I looked it up because he showed me I looked it up too. Y'all yeah, did. I'm like, good God Almighty. I said, I wouldn't wear that. That's a little bit too much for me. Pow! <laughs> I said, I can't wear that. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, it's just too much for me. But 75, I said, boy, that'll pay off a few bills, won't it? <laughs> but here's my point. And I, and I know, and I know, I know. God has a way of encouraging His folks. And here's the other thing: we don't know. Good man, we don't know where. That's why God said, "Just keep your mouth." You don't know whose hand God is scratching to scratch your shoulder. So my motive, God determined. Listen, God determined how I receive. But my motive, the wrong motive can cancel out everything that God has coming to me. Unexplainable stuff. And that's why Pastor T, I mean, that wasn't just, that wasn't just, I mean, I mean, about three things happened this week, just like unexplainable. How did that happen? Unexplainable. I got, I ain't qualified for this. I ain't qualified. They made you like over the whole state? Yeah. Yeah. The whole state. You qualified? No. No, they got me going to secret classes so I can qualify. <laughs> Unexplainable. 
unexplainable. We serve a God. Listen to me. Oh, listen. God wants us to believe. We cannot believe too big for God. God is not sitting around sending angels down here and saying, tell them don't, don't get the host up too high. God ain't like that. God, that's why you gotta, that's why you, that's why you gotta spend time with him and, 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 and you t- so where he can start, start messing with your mind and getting you to believe stuff that's unexplainable. I'm sorry, I just had to get that out. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So people say, well, do I have to tie? No, fool, you don't have to. It, it ain't mandatory, but you would be stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you too. I'm sorry. That probably wasn't. See, I, my wife ain't here. I say stuff, but sh- 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 I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> okay, I asked you to go to where? Second Corinthians 7? Nine, yeah, nine, 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 nine. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, okay, let's run. Uh, now, we're going to see the contrast now. Now, remember, uh, the tithe is how much? And if you don't give it, what are you doing? Robbing God. If you don't, when you rob God, what happens? Look at this, verse 7. Here's, under, here's a kingdom citizen. It's a whole new Jesus brought a whole new orientation. Let each one give as he made up his own mind. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. You mean I make up my own mind what I'm going to give? No, he didn't. I make up my own mind. Is that what he said? Watch this. Let him, as he made up his own mind and purpose, where? Not reluctantly, not sorrowfully, not under compulsion. So God, okay, get this, you don't get anything else. What you give to God, God does not want you feeling like, man, I ain't trying to do this. He does not want you feeling bad about giving to him. He doesn't want you feeling like this is a duty. I got to do this. He does not want you to feel like it's a it's an obligation, it's a requirement, it's a it's a it's a I, uh, I don't want to, but I got to. If I can get favor, if I can, if it'll get me favor from God. He doesn't want you feeling bad about giving. You getting this? He doesn't want you, golly, I'm get, you give him, yeah, child, I got to get it because, you know, I, he, God say, holy, keep it. Now, the people you give it to, they'll benefit, the church will benefit, the minute you benefit, it won't benefit, but it won't benefit you. God wants you blessed. God wants unexplainable stuff happening in your house. And consequently, when it happened to your house, it's a blessing to you. Something, because we all say kingdom. kingdom. So when something good happened to her, it just happened to me. We just had a manifestation in between the service. We both did. I'm like, look at that. She said, look at this. Okay, there's Dante over there. Wave at me. How many of y'all see Dante on TV the other day? Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm like, yeah, that's my man. And I always go back before he became the man. When he was the other man. But God can do. Boy, when I, when, I, when I get to this familiarity thing, it can be so revelatory. Can I say one thing right now, though? Sometimes we sentence people, and we think you can never change. You ain't going to ever change. You know about, yeah, you've heard it. Yeah, but he ain't worth a nickel. Well, that was 10 years ago. But see, when you're familiar with somebody, you just lock them in to that space. You can never change. And that is so wrong. Because <laughs> you changed. And I changed. And what? We changed. Yeah. But when you're so familiar with somebody, that means that mean you know everything you need to know about them. Okay. Let's keep leaking out. I might as well go ahead and preach it, huh? Okay. So, so. Listen, he said, how you, as you made up in your own mind, 
wrong attitude can completely cancel out the benefits of giving. If you feel like it's a sense of duty, you're avoiding out the benefit. I remember one time we had a um, we had a we had this child care business, and you know, I'm looking I'm looking at the bottom line, okay? <laughs> I'm looking at the bottom line. We need to make some money. <laughs> and uh, God said, "That's wrong." He said, "You need to look at the service." I'm gonna come here by y'all. You need to look at the service that you're providing. You raise your level of what you can give and provide. Your motive is you want to provide for them kids and give ease and, 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 uh, 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 to the parents and all that. I do? Okay. Motive. So those of you in business, the bottom line can't be your, 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 the only thing you think about. Those of you on the job, you know, you can't, you, your motive can't just be how much I can do now to get to the next one. Right. Oh, yeah. right. How can I add to this department? Amen. These people thought enough of me to put me in position. How can I be a blessing to them and help them get promoted? Amen. That's right. It's not just about me. It's never what I get out of this. This is what he's talking about. What, it's not just, just giving out of, out of what's in it for me. No, it's what, what's in it that can be a blessing to other people. Motive. So according to the, now, did I read verse 7? Okay, let's see the rest of it. B. For God loves, you see the difference now? God loves, he's not cursing. He, he loves, take pleasure in, prizes above all other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it. Ain't got to think two weeks, six months. Well, the Lord spoke to me six months ago. What the heck you waiting on? <laughs> uh, prompt to do it, prompt to do it giver, who's what? Okay, thanks. I love you. This is the profile. This is the profile of a giver that honors God and that can expect the unexplainable. There's got to be a joyfulness. There's got to be a promptness to it. And there's got to be where your heart is in this thing. Hallelujah. This has nothing to do, all that cursed stuff, that was all back there. We're in, this, we're in the kingdom now. And so my giving, if I need to, you know, I need to make the adjustments to where my giving now is because, God, I love it. I love it. I love it. I can hardly wait for it. This is, this is so awesome. I can't wait for the next thing that I'm able and, and I, that I get to do. Here's the difference. Now, stay with me. I'm going to show you, show you we're going to go to this probably next week too. But I want you to hold your place there. And we're going to go to the first Chronicles. I want to show you a picture of this, even in the Old Testament. First Chronicles 29. Hmm. Because something supernatural is supposed to happen to me in my life. All the time. When my giving's like this. Hallelujah. Okay, look at David, 1 Chronicles 29, 2. Now for the house of my God, I have provided or prepared with all of my might. I have provided or prepared with all my might for the house of God. And then it goes to the offering. But I want to I stick on, he provided with what? How do you prepare your offering with all your might? This is not something you, oh, you flip out your phone when, when we get to church. Amen. He thought about this thing. He, he laid this thing out, and he's like, God, this is, this is what I get to do. But, Lord, this, here's why I'm doing it. You've been so good to me. Look at what you've done. Now, now, now you, you, my son, you, you're blessed. My son, he's going to be able to build this temple. Look at what you delivered me out of. Look at where you brought me. You brought me out of the, the sheepfold. God, I'm, and so he put his emotions in there. He put his affection in there. Okay, go down to verse 3. He said, moreover, because I have set my affection. 
on the house of God. Now, house of God, he talking about the temple, but, but we're talking about, say, the kingdom of God. Because I set my affections on the kingdom of God. His affection is, is, at his, is at his disposal. You can affect whatever you want to affect. You can love whatever you want to love. You can learn to love some. I was telling him this morning, I have a friend who's India, India. He's an Indian, real light Indian, Indian. And, and he went and got, went back to India or somewhere. He went somewhere and got his daughter's husband and his, his son's wife. That's what they do. That's what they do. They, 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 they pick their wives. And so, and I said, well, how are y'all? We were sitting there eating that Indian food. Lord Jesus, it was so good. And he said, um. I said, hi, hi. he said, no, that's what we're doing. He said, that's why we don't have all the divorces y'all be having. And then he told me this. I said, well, huh? she don't even know the dude. <laughs> he said, right. This is what he said. You can learn to love anybody. How many of y'all like, I ain't swallowing that. <laughs> How many of y'all believe that? Okay, ain't nobody. I mean, you can raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, for some of y'all are. <laughs> okay. But it's true. How many of you love your dog? You learn you learn you learn a lot of love an animal. Well, I've had this dog forever. I don't want to you learn to love him. You can learn to love people. And then those who got married because they thought they were in love. No, you need, you need to learn. This is, a, this is an ever-growing thing. Your love got to grow, baby. Yeah, you, your love needs to grow. If you've been together 20 years, you ought to be doing way better than somebody been together five years. Why? Because we're learning each other. And let that familiarity thing slip in there. And start kicking it around and throwing <laughs> But here's my point. You can set your affections. He said he set his affections on the house of God. In addition to all I have prepared for the holy house, I made a private treasure of gold and silver, which I give for the house of God. So his point was, God, I'm doing this, but something is happening to where I don't have to do this. But because of what the kingdom of God has meant to me, because what you meant to me and what you're doing for me and what, what has taken place, this, this, is not a, this is not even a, up for debate. I really encourage you, when y'all have y'all family meetings, y'all do have family meetings, right? Okay, well, this should be on the agenda. I, mean, I know I have a goal. I have a giving goal. I just said it big. I, I go and, and we talk. This is this is what we're gonna do for the kingdom of God. And you talk. Listen, God has been good to us. Look at where we and whatever it is. Now let me say this part because I want you. Okay, let me see if you can pay attention. What can cancel out your harvest or the benefits? Okay, what does God want in your motive? What? Okay. Your heart. Your heart. What else? Cheerfulness. What else? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start wrapping up, and go back, and then I'm gonna read a testimony that, uh, that I got a couple months ago, that I think really fits in here. Powerful, powerful. Um, 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 okay, go back to Second Corinthians chapter nine. Thank you, Jesus. Man. Okay, look at verse eight. Okay, now we saw David's passion. How many know God wants passion? Okay, verse eight says, "And God is able to make how much grace." How much grace? All grace. All grace. Every favor, every earthly blessing come to you how? Yeah. And I know y'all heard me preach it, but act like you never heard it before. So that you may what? Always. Always. And what else? All and what else? Whatever Be self-sufficient, possess enough to acquire no aid or support, furnish in abundance. 
for every good work. Now, I've said this before, I keep saying it because it's so powerful under this kingdom giving. This is not just about getting dollars and cents back in your pocket. Always, under all circumstances, and whatever need, I, I loved it because I realized there's some things that money can't handle. Amen. There's some things that money can't, there's some issues money can't solve. There's some, there's some things that come up that, that's over and above money. There's some circumstances that come up like, keep throwing money at me. I'll make, I'll break you. I'll break you. And you'll never see no result. Then you have two problems. This one, and then you're broke. That's some things that money can't deliver. Ah, that's some things that money can't bring peace about. Always under what? All circumstances. So he's saying my giving connect me to stuff that, that dollars and cents. This is way beyond money. It's way beyond money. That's why I say rich folks got to give too. Because that's some things rich folks have that money can't even touch. That money can't touch. That would do anything. Anything to get relief from something. Money can't do it. And money will stay you down. I mean, circumstances will stay you down. What you got? How are you going to come out of this one? I don't care what kind of counsel you got. This ain't under the jurisdiction of counsel. You work, work for more job. Work for more. Your giving can deliver. Money can't. He said, always under how many ways? So whatever the need. Under all circumstances and whatever the need. Question. Can you get all grace, all favor, and every blessing to come to you? Can you make it happen? Giving can. All grace. Paul, God, God, uh, Paul told God in 2 Corinthians that uh, Paul was harassed by this demon. Harassed. I don't know if you've ever been harassed by demonic forces, but he was. And he said, he said, God, look, okay, I'm just out here trying to do your will. Can you take this thing off me so I can keep on going? And God told him what? His what? Grace is what? Sufficient. He's telling us here, my giving can make all grace, even grace to take demonic forces off of my life. This grace is a, and then Paul went on to say, my strength is made, he said, Paul, God, God want to say, my strength is made strong in your weakness. What does that mean? God said, when you come to the end of yourself, when you come to the end of yourself, now my strength, kick, my grace kicks in. It's a divine empowerment. It's a divine empowerment for you to do what you couldn't do by yourself. I was telling the folks, you ever been in a situation when it's like, you're like, God, I know you got me. I know, I know you love me and all that. But why is it taking so long? God, this is long. <laughs> God, I know, I know you're faithful. I know the word says it. I know you watch over your word. But why? Why does it got to take? Why got to? Why gotta take so long? Why can't you just yabba dabba do? I don't like long. <laughs> no, no, some of you here now, I mean, we all got the, and it's like, okay, God, I know I got the victory. I know, you know, I know you always cause me to triumph, but why, why, why I gotta take so long? <laughs> this is where that strength come, in your weakness. That am I strong? You know what the Bible got a name for it? Let patience have its perfect work. <laughs> but see, sometimes you remember. I think we were teaching about. Uh, I know you talked about. It, I know I talked about. It, I don't know if I got you got it from me. If I got it from you, part of the one of the processes in receiving. If God doesn't give you a miracle, He'll give you strength to endure. That's part. That's part of the process, man. That's why I gotta talk to you like this because you're not doing wrong. It's just you gotta, you gotta. 
Y'all know what that means? You got to go through. We're going through. Do I walk through the shadow of death? No, death is going through. I got to. That means that's overcome. If, if I can just walk through everything like that, I wouldn't need to be an overcomer. I, I can be a walker through her. No, that's some time. That's some time you hit the wall, baby. You done pulled every lever, pushed every button, did every act you can find, and and you just gotta go. I want to encourage you today, those of you. It's like, man, it's okay. God, see the fact that you're still standing. You weren't supposed to be standing a year ago. You're still standing. That's supernatural. That's the strength of God. A lot of people quit. Part of my strength comes. My giving attached me to that. Attaches me. Yeah. <laughs> he said, give and you shall receive. Right? Good measure, press down, shake. He didn't tell me when. He didn't tell me when. He just said, but he said, don't be weary in what? Because in due season you will what? There, there it is. There it is right there. So, so he said, Paul, my, my grace sufficient for them. So I said I'll let to say this. Given is a kingdom principle. God set this up this way. Now I want to deal with one thing before I go before you go, before I go, before we go and then we're going to receive our offering. Well I'm going to re read this testimony when we receive our offering. Go back to 2 Corinthians verse 7 verse 7. Woo! Thank y'all for sitting and listening to this. Let each one give as he made up his own mind and did what? Is it up there? Okay, how come y'all not reading? Okay. <laughs> Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart. Now, I wanted to, to close with that because... Now, let me say this. I'm a tither. I, I give 10%. We... We, we're way past that. We, we, I will always, what we call tithe. Always, I'm never gonna. When till Jesus comes, I've been doing for. We've been doing it for 34 years, and we don't plan on stopping now. Why do you think that is? How? It works. It works. We'll never stop. But here's what I want to tell you. Now, I know there's other people in here the same way, same way. And I've seen, I, I know people in here that have given whole checks, the whole check, just sign it over, the whole thing. We've done that. Um, something happens as you grow in God and God becomes so real to you. That's not a, it's not a, you know, I'm not saying it's, not, it's easy, but it's not a, it's not a, did I just lose my mind? It's not like that. But it would be more beneficial because to some people, 10%, oh, Lord, no, 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 not no, no. To some people, 10% is a, is a reach, it's a stretch, it's a, ain't no way. And then some people, 10%, they do it, but ain't nothing in it. It would be better for you to do two, three, four, five, a half a percent. If you can do it full of joy, full of cheer, full of praise, and full of adoration, and full of affection, rather than give that 10, and then for the next two days, Jesus, I don't know about this, 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 you know, I don't you know why, why the, why the church got to take so many offerings anyway? You know, no, I mean, no, you, yeah, yeah. because it's all about your motive. motive. You can give 10, you can give $100,000, but, but nothing benefits you because your heart, not your heart, but because if the motive is wrong, it'll cancel out all of that. I'd rather you give a little bit, but keep working toward it. Yeah. 
I'm as I, I rather it's between you and God, but I'm trying, trying, I'm trying to get you there to where you get to a point where no, there's no needs whatsoever, and you can do what you need to do. You can give God can speak to you. You know God can't tell you to give a hundred thousand if you ain't got it. He will only speak to you to give it if you got it and got some more. He give bread for the uh, what's it? How that go? Seed to the soul and sower and bread for your food. And so this whole exercise is about not despising your giving. Amen. Not despising it and not coming under. That's why you, you have never heard me get up here and like, you better do this. Man. I'll never even talk about that. Because if I can get you to love God and get you to understand it, you'll give way, way beyond what, what. And then, and then your life, something will happen in your life. Something will happen in your business. Something will happen in your home. Something will happen that is unexplainable. So wherever your level of joy, I can do this and be and get to the point where I can't wait till you receive that offer. Wherever that level is. Wherever that level is. Well, Pastor, I just, I just want to. Now, now, what we're doing next week is a challenge offering. It's a stretch offering. It's a, and you can do that. But if you decide, well, I ain't, I ain't, I'm not trying to do all of that. As you purpose in your heart. But now, maybe we'll talk about it next week. I didn't even bring it. Well, it's in there. If you give sparingly, you reap how. If you give bountifully, you reap how? So the amount does matter. The amount does matter. So, so okay, like we've been doing 34 years. So, you know, we graduated from the 10 to where it's, it's so, so I'm expecting, I'm expecting. One year we gave 40, I think, the last time I counted it, at that time. 40, well, 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 well how'd you... We don't even, I don't even keep track. It's the point, you get to the point where it's not even, God, thank you. And there's not one week. There's not one week that some outside comes in. Not a week, not a week goes by. Not, I'm serious, not one week goes by that something outside of my normal source comes. It's not a week. Now I'm not bragging. I'm trying to tell you how it works. I I, had, I, I, got, I know people that that very very awesome people, and you know, one of them I learned from it that there was stuff that happened, and he he connected to his giving. There was no way humanly possible what happened could happen. But all grace, every favor, and every blessing came to him in abundance. Hit his children. Well, hit, you know, connected to a children. So this is more than just about giving offerings. Hallelujah. Now, let me close this with this uh, testimony. Uh, a young man sent me. He's sitting here. <laughs> it's, a, it's a conversation. He sent me this conversation, and it's about first fruit. And uh, now we've been doing this for eight years, and, you know, like I said, I'm not trying to get anybody to do anything. We got our dependencies on God. And that's why I will never pressure you, put, twist your arm, or, or try to do some song and dance, or try to manipulate. This is, this is, I love God too much for that. And God knows my heart. God knows I'm just trying to give you what somebody gave me that helped me and took me somewhere I couldn't go on myself. Okay, here's a conversation. It says, um, I was really struggling financially when my ex left. I was barely making it. I was uh, talking to a coworker the other day, and she said, I don't know how you do it or did it. I was probably the lowest paid person on the job. The janitor was making more money than me. And I decided to give all I had on that first fruit Sunday. I heard pastor many, look at it, I heard pastor many years before this, but I didn't get it. Pastor Ken's over there. I'm just somebody else. 
thank God the pastor didn't just quit teaching because sometimes people look at him like, there you go. Thank God he didn't fall into that. <laughs> and, I, 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 and I know I have to do that. I heard pastor many years, many years before, but I didn't do it. I didn't have money to get food and people thought, thought I was crazy. I didn't eat seriously for two weeks. I just believed what pastor said, you know, the word. And I gave all I had. A month later, here I was signing a contract with a $30,000 raise. Yeah. Here's what she said. That money test is real. But he is our source. So, so, so he said, so did you give your whole paycheck? She said, no, I paid my rent and everything I had, everything else extra I gave to God, it was more than I have ever given before. I was so scared. But somehow I made it and my heart was telling me it was time. And I, man, I'm out of time, but let me say this. Your head can give you fits. But something inside knows that it's the thing to do. I, I can't explain that, but some of y'all know what I'm talking about. I, I, I can't explain that. I, 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 I wish I could. I wish God could give me a way to explain that. And everything around you, everybody talking, what? You could. Anyway. She said, she said, she said uh, 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 you give your whole paycheck? No, no, no. But my heart said it was time. And so, and then he asked, so what were you standing and praying for? She said, for God to take me somewhere where I was appreciated and where money was no longer an issue. She went from, yeah. Where Corey at? Is that a true story? Yeah. He's the one sent it to me. Because he's like, how you do that? I'm doing it. <laughs> no, I don't know if he, no, he, he, he's awesome, awesome young man. But he, he is like, so, so I, I read that and I pointed to him so y'all know I ain't making this up. And this happens. We we got this happens. So it ain't past. It ain't Patrick ain't running some game. This stuff happens. And so it's just a matter of digging in now and saying, okay. So here's what I want you to do. I, you know, this is something you got to think about. And you you sit down with with God and and even with with the first fruit coming up next week. Pray God. What do you want me to do? And God, do I need to stretch? Because He knows what's coming up. He knows what's coming up around the corner. And a stretch for somebody may, may not be a stretch for you. But, but God, okay, I, I got to tap into this all sufficiency in all things. Let's get ready to receive our offering.